Good morning, good afternoon, evening, and uh, we're about to start our webinar. So the importance of candidate experience. Um, so welcome. We've got myself, Greg Guilford uh, from HR Solutions, and Frederick Melander, head of partnerships from Team Taylor, and we'll be supported by Sue Watson and the team Arden uh, to answer any of your questions as we go along. So just how to ask questions on your chat panel, on your uh, GoToWebinar screen, you should have something that looks very similar to what's on the screen right now. If you type your question in there, then um, we'll answer the technical questions as we go along. But uh, when we will pause at the end of Frederick's session to answer any other questions you've raised for either Frederick or ourselves, and we'll aim to answer as many as we can. Also throughout this session, we will try and have some polls to try and make it a bit more interactive for everybody rather than just uh, sort of sitting there and watching your screen. For those of you who are not familiar, there will be a pop-up that comes up on the screen that um, simply will have the question and then it'll give you the options that relate to that poll and you simply click the option that is most relevant to you. So that's the housekeeping out of the way. Um, just want to kind of set the scene a little bit. I think it's safe to say that the coronavirus has shaped the world and how we all behave, but we need to also start to think about how this will impact on the recruitment experience. Um, obviously, there's been a decline in face-to-face -face interviews or we're pretty much stopping entirely. Uh, and these, this is likely to continue uh, for some time until we relax the social distancing rules in the UK. So it's probably now more than ever the, the candidate experience needs to be managed as when we return to normal there's likely to be a lot more candidates out there but also the best ones will continue to be in high demand and therefore you want to make sure they want to come and work for you by engaging them throughout that recruitment experience. For those of you who have been on some of our webinars they've been focused on managing your workforce during this period of time. We also have some new webinars upcoming in terms of returning to work Obviously, this webinar is, is focused on how to get the best candidate experience from future recruitment campaigns. So before I hand you over to Frederick, I just wanted to do a few polls with you just to sort of get you involved. So the first poll is, do you think that you'd be recruiting in the next three to six months? So that should pop up on your screen. The options are yes, no, or don't know. Just wait a few more seconds. About 50% of you have voted. Okay, I'm going to close that poll now. Let's share that result there. So it's quite positive that 65% um, of you have indicated that you think you'll be recruiting in the next three to six months. Um, this hopefully indicates that uh, you know we should get back to normal fairly fairly soon. The next poll I've got for you is how do you currently manage your candidates through the recruitment experience? So do you do that via an applicant tracking system, email conversations, phone calls, video calls, or perhaps you, you're not managing your candidates at the moment? Okay, so we're about 60% people voted, so I'll be shop stopping shortly. Okay, I'm just going to share those results with you. So there's a bit of a mixed response on this poll. So 48% uh, applicant tracking systems, the majority are still using email conversations and phone calls. Um, and there's the video calls as well, which is kind of a new trend that's happening as well. And then there's only 7% indicating that you're currently not trying to manage uh, candidates through the recruitment process. Okay, so then the last poll before I hand you over to Frederick. Which is trying more about a personal view for yourselves rather than the company you're working for. So, so how important would the candidate experience be to you if you were looking for a new role? So we have very important, important 
and not very important. Okay, about 60% of you have completed so far. So I'll just give it a few more seconds. Okay, I'm closing the poll. Okay, so you can see there that 83% uh, of you indicated that it would be very important to you and 17% important. So obviously, you know, when you're looking um, for a new role, you know, try, and, try and put yourselves in the shoes of the candidate as well. So they are going to want this candidate experience to be, to be better than it has been in the past. Okay, thank you for taking part of those polls. So I'm now going to progress with the, the webinar and hand you over to Frederick. So just bear with me a second while I pass the controls over to Frederick. I want to begin this webinar with more of an introduction to why I'm talking about this subject, who we are at Team Taylor, what we do, and why I think I could hopefully share some light on this topic and will hopefully will give you guys something to bring on for your future recruitment, something to learn, and also see the value of the candidate ex experience as a whole. So I'm going to start off with just doing a quick presentation about Team Taylor to give you an insight about what we are doing at Team Taylor and where we're coming from and what problem we're trying to solve. Because I saw that a lot of you guys were using an African tracking software and you probably have realized what's been happening in the last, uh, well, couple of years in the recruiting industry that well, the entire recruiting industry has changed quite a lot in the last decade probably just due to the uh, social media boom, the e-commerce boom, the mobile phones and everything that comes with it. And prior to the corona situation, we realized a lot of companies were struggling with recruiting. They were struggling to find the right people, they were struggling to reach the right people, and they were struggling to maintain the relationship with these kind of people and uh, therefore failing their recruiting goals. So we wanted to create a platform that helps you do all of these kind of things in one platform. So a marketing platform combined with a ATS platform that's built to really make sure that the candidate has the best possible experience and that the recruiter can really give the candidate the best possible experience by having the right tools to do so. Um, so we wanted to build a platform that is designed for the candidate instead of something that's just designed for HR or admins to just do their work. We wanted to make sure that both ends of the spectrum had best possible experience to make sure that candidates and recruiters were on the same level and the gap between the company and the candidate weren't that as wide as it sometimes is today. So really make sure that we can give our clients the best possible results and also to make sure that the candidates get the best possible delivery. So we really have created a platform that's divided into two things. One of them is a career site and a marketing platform that allows you to really market yourself as a brand and that's built for you to really give the candidate the opportunity they, to find all the info they need for the, for the uh, company to really highlight their employer brand and really highlight their values, their core, and make sure that all the information that the candidate is looking for is available easily on any single device, and as well as for the company to really make sure they market themselves with the right tools, and everything here is done within the platform. The other thing is the traditional ATS, where we want to make sure that you can really streamline the process and make sure that you can take care of your candidates from whichever device you want to do, make sure you can automate certain things, make sure you can really give your candidates feedback and really measure candidate experience as well through some of the features that we have added into Team Taylor. But I don't want to go too much into details about us. It's more about showing you guys an insight to what our product is doing, where we're going and where we're coming from. But this is probably one of the most important things in this entire scenario because what we want to do is we want to change the way of working for most recruiters and for most, most HR professionals out there. We realize it's pretty, it's been pretty stagnant, uh, it's, pretty, it's been pretty slow and it's been pretty similar to how most recruiters have worked in the past. And we want to make sure that companies can try new things, try, to different, try different approaches and make sure that they have the right tools to really give the candidates the best possible experience as well. Uh, we always interpret ourselves as the Sherpas, the ones seen here in the picture, who are an indigenous people who live pretty close to Mount Everest and the Himalayas, who pretty much helped all the mountain climbers who are climbing to the top of Mount Everest to get there. So they're the guides, they're the people who help carry luggage, and they're the people who scout out the best routes for the mountain climbers to actually reach the top. 
And we want to try to do the same thing for recruiters. We want to make sure that we can help guide the recruiters to the new era of recruiting and give them the right tools to really reach the top and become the best possible versions of themselves. And this has actually worked out pretty well for us. We were founded back in 2014, early 2014, and currently we work with roughly 3,000 customers worldwide. Some of them are really major ones, so really big ones. Uh, global brands such as Autoleave, who work have roughly 70,000 employees. Some are tech companies, smaller ones, and the, the size range is anything from one employee to like 80,000 employees. But we also have quite a lot of figures because we tend to get almost 500 to 600,000 new applicants through Team Teller every single month. And Team Teller is used by over 100,000 people, so we tend to get a lot of data based on this as well, but so we, we tend to have so, a lot to work with. And hence why I'm trying to see if I can shed some light on this topic. But before I head into what you can do and the importance of candidate experience, I really want to make sure that we understand the status quo. What's, what's the candidate situation like right now? What do, do candidates feel about the well candidate experience uh, that they're experiencing in most scenarios right now? Because what we realize it's it's actually way worse than we could have, could have imagined. Just trying to Google certain pages, you see a lot, a lot of horrific numbers that candidates don't really feel like they enjoy their um, the kind of experience. Some some people quit the application process. Seventy five percent were even asked for feedback. Lengthy processes to make sure that sixty percent of people don't apply. Uh, 81% 80, 80, will, will share a negative experience with their network. And this is just from one Google where you can really find a lot of really horrific figures that candidates don't really like the candidate experience that they're uh, used to. Only 25% um, on average on can of candidates say that they ha rate their candidate experience as great, which means most people re really don't like um, the candidate experience they're put out to, which means there's a whole uh, opportunity for you to change and you don't have to do that, that big change to get really big results. Uh, just one small thing is you need to understand the candidate journey and understand which, which touch points you actually talk to the candidate. When do they reach you? When do you have the opportunity to change? Where do you have the opportunity to change? What can you do in order to improve and what can you do in order to, to uh, make sure you really get better results? And understanding your current situation, how your candidate journey is, how the application's journey is, is a key part of this because this will allow you to really pinpoint certain things where you can really improve. According to some figures that I've read, I think it was last week based on our, on our own uh, statistics, uh, you get 170% better candidate experience if you give them a fast offer, like less than a week after their, their interview. And just a small thing like actually giving them feedback or asking them for feedback, what you can improve, what you can do better and actually giving them feedback Will almost give you a hundred percent better candidate experience as well. So there's small things you can do to really make sure you can tweak and make the entire the entire journey better. We also know that it's usually not that everybody wants to have a great candidate experience, but usually there's something else coming in between, which really shows the importance of understanding your current situation, understanding the journey your candidates will go through, and also having the right tools and the right skill sets internally to make sure you can deliver that candidate experience as well. And one of the best things in order to understand your candidate's journey is to understand your candidates and understanding your candidate persona. Who are they? Where, where, where are they? What are they looking for? What's most important to them? And what can you highlight to really make sure that you set the clear expectations to what you can deliver? Because if you start talking to them in the long, wrong language, so to say, and talking about the right things rather, you will really get a better result in understanding your candidate and really understood, understand, understand when you're find, finding these touch points, how you can improve. Because if you know the candidate you're trying to re recruit and you know which steps of the journey they will go through, you will then also be able to understand how you can improve, where you can improve, and especially if you start asking for feedback. Then you will really understand your candidates, how their journey is. And really try to do it yourself as well. One of the best tips I can give for a company is to ask people in your surrounding to try to apply for, for your company and try to understand What's it like to apply for, a com for your company? Because usually you are pretty home blind, so you don't really see your own flaws. So when someone you really trust and someone really evaluates it, you will really be able to understand a lot of the things that you can improve upon. But it's also your own responsibility to make sure that you understand which candidates you're looking for, which touch points are you trying to reach and what's trying to happen. Because you can't really just 
expect the candidate uh, well, experience to just improve out of nowhere. You actually have to take a different route and you actually have to force change and actually change where you're going and change uh, pretty much some of the tools in, in order to do so as well, probably. So you really can't stay on the same road and just magically hope that something will just fix itself. This is something you have to work on, you have to continually have to work on, and you really need to make sure that you deliver that change and you, need, you really need to make sure where you're going and where you want to reach as well. Try to set some kind of guidelines, some kind of goal and some kind of expectation to where you want to become, what kind of metric you want to measure, anything. So you know and you have a target to reach because that way you'll be able to force the change a lot better as well and just instead of just trying to guess to, uh, to deliver a better change as well. Because what we realize is that people will talk and this will have a lot of uh, pretty severe like negative or positive um, uh, benefit on your brand and your company. It's like the, the old game you used to play when you were a child, what the whisper game, where someone whispers something in one, in one person's ear and 10 people later it's in something completely different. Because what we've noticed, what we've seen is if you have a really bad candidate experience, that will impact your bottom line. People will not purchase your, your services, your goods. They will try to avoid and shop somewhere else. They will actively recommend other people not to apply for your jobs. And they will actively pretty much sabotage trying, trying to get other people to apply for your jobs and try to get and try to purchase your goods. We also know that the, uh, the, the, the opposite side of that, if you have a really, really good one, you will talk to people, you will recommend other people if you weren't the right person for that job and you will actively talk to you and really lift up the brand that you're doing it. So there's really good, both brand, positive brand impact as well as brand like downsides. Like I think Virgin, the um, Richard Branson's uh, Virgin Media, I think they had a, a estimated that they had a $6 million loss every single year just because of bad candidate experience. Because people were starting to talk bad about them, they were shopping less and they were using their services less and they were actively interacting less with the company. So once they started realizing that they have and really worked on their candidate experience, they started getting a huge benefit. So now they can, based on the latest statistics, I think they have five million more dollars every single year based on people interacting more positively with the brand. Um, and these are figures I can send out later and um, based on studies that they have done that the brand impact and the bottom line impact of having a good or a bad candidate experience is more severe than you think. You can lose a lot of money or you can make a lot of money. And it will really um, like impact your customer brand as well as your employer brand, which is really key for you to understand as well. Because it's important that you set the right expectations when you talk to your candidates as well. When you have the candidate and you really understand the, the entire journey, that, then you're better able to set the right expectations for the people who are, who are applying. You can really make sure that you give them what they're looking for, you can treat them the best way they're looking for, and you can really make sure that you don't lose out on a lot of things. This is probably one of the biggest things you can just change in, in understanding yourself. Because if you understand the current situation of how much this can impact your brand positively or negatively, and then if you understand your recruiting process from, from start to finish, and if you understand your candidates, what they're looking for and what's important to them, you'll really be able to set clear set like really clear expectations, which will help you a lot throughout building and finalizing a really good candidate experience. Because we know that people will avoid reapplying, people will talk bad, like I said. And one of the most important things you can do here is transparency. And transparency is of course a pretty hard thing to do. It's probably pretty scary to do in terms of like being fully transparent with everything. But transparency doesn't have to be you sharing everything, salary and the hard things. This could just actually be showing an insight to the actual everyday. The importance of video and actually meeting colleagues and talking to colleagues and giving people an insight to what they can expect and understand what they're looking for is so important. And also making sure that they're, they're updated, communicated with and and everything from start to finish. But transparency is more about your employer brand. So when a candidate is applying to you you're at you as a, as a company, they need to understand, well, what, what can I expect? What's gonna happen for me here? What what can I anticipate from this from this company? And really make sure that you're fully or as transparent as you can to make sure that what they apply to is also what they get. Because otherwise this will also lead to 
pretty bad things in in long run because if they apply to something and it's something way different to what they expected, that will probably uh, not end well. This is probably one of the biggest things you can work with in terms of uh, your candidate experience because when you look at all the figures and all the statistics, both if you just Google candidate experience statistics or if you try to find look through our own figures, communication is one of the things that people really, really struggle with. People don't get feedback after applying. People don't get feedback after um, uh, interviews. People don't get updated on what's happening in the, the recruiting process. It's even to the bad that 65% of people applying for a job don't even hear back ever after applying to a job. Or 60% don't even hear back after an interview. And these are things you can pretty easily change by having the right tools and understanding your recruiting process and understanding what you can update. Through most softwares that you're using right now, you can have a no update update to just communicate, hey, this is what's happening, we don't have an update right now. Or communicate, hey, we're looking at your profile right now and we'll get back to you in three days or five days or seven days. Understanding your, your process from start to finish will help you understand where you need to communicate and how you need to communicate better. But the most important thing here is just make sure that you communicate on the most important aspects when they get the job, when they don't get it, get the job. Make sure that you communicate and give them feedback why they didn't get the job and why you didn't really go forward with their, with their profile. It's even to the point where people will actually avoid reapplying again and they will tell other people if they don't get feedback. And this is probably one of the things that people hear the most and people complain the most about in terms of candidate experience. They won't get updated, they don't get any feedback, they don't understand what's happening in the process. Most candidates just feel like they're put, sending in their SMA or applying to a job and they never hear back anything ever again. The second most important thing, at least from my opinion, is speed. Uh, and this is probably something you don't even th always think about, especially in the beginning. But when it comes to the best candidates out there, they're not on the market for very long. If you're actively looking for a job, you don't want to be sitting unemployed for a very long time. You want to make sure that you have a really good process. And you want to make sure that you find something pretty fast because you don't really like being employed. Uh, unemployed, but the best candidates, they will probably be off the market even further because they will be headhunted, they will be re targeted at, people will reach, reach out to them, and they will have a lot of different options to select from. And after this corona situation, we'll be in a situation where more people will be actively applying for jobs than they were prior to the corona. But like Greg said earlier, that can, the best candidates will still be really hard to reach, and you still will really need to make sure that you give them the best opportunity to pick your company. And speed here is of the essence. Just going back to the figure that I mentioned earlier, 170% higher percentage rate in your candidate experience by offering them the job one week after their interview. Um, and this is pretty understandable. If you're if yourself is actually applying for a job, you want to make sure you get feedback and you have a, a response so you know, should I continue applying for other jobs? Should I just wait here and see, should I wait? And I think in, on a recent statistic, 35% of, of candidates were still expecting responses after three months of applying for jobs. So here it's just so much better that you understand your current process, you make sure that you actually um, give them feedback and update them on what's happening. Even if they don't get the job, make sure they get feedback fast, because that will help you out a lot. This one is probably the hardest one to do in scale, uh, but it's just as important and it's probably the thing that differentiates the best from, well, the worst to some extent. People want to feel like that they're special. People want to feel like you're actually talking to them instead of just giving them a standardized email. You can do a lot with give communicating and speed with just automatic templates, just give them an update on what's happening. Just make sure that they're updated, they're given feedback to make sure that they actually feel like they're a part and they're interacting with during the recruiting process. The personalization process of the uh, candidate experience is something I recommend really doing for, towards the end of your recruiting process because this will really give a final touch. Uh, last night I listened to a podcast of how Lego are treating their candidates, the, their final candidates. They're giving them gift bags, they're giving them personal, e personal email, they're really making sure that they feel special and the last part of their, of their recruiting process. Slack has a, has a public Slack channel that they invite people to so they can talk to employees 
at the company to really understand how the entire process works. So here is my suggestion is, is really make sure you give something in your own personal touch to make sure that you're actually talking to the individual instead of talking to someone at scale. Because this is what will make them really talk to you in a really positive fashion. When someone talks like, holy shit, you will not imagine what I got from this company when I was in the recruiting process. They told me this, they did this, they did that. And the positive things and the, the, the rings on the water and the butterfly effect that I can give you is incredible but it's hard to do at scale. So once you've reached a certain point and once you've understood your, your candidate experience and you've understood the, the candidate journey, you know where to add something. It doesn't have to even be a major thing. It could be sending them out a t-shirt, something, something small to give a personal touch, making sure that they feel special. Because that is what's gonna be bringing you huge butterfly effects in the positive aspects of things. Something I have pretty huge passion is is actually, well, the application process and removing the hurdles of the application process. Currently, I think 60% of candidates will actively uh, like abort a application process if the, can, the application process is too hard. So you need to make sure that you make it as easy as possible from the person finding your company to the person applying to your company. Try to remove as many clicks and remove, remove as many hurdles as possible. One of the biggest hurdles that we see out there right now is the ask for a CV or a resume or whichever word you like to use for it, because especially for a person who's currently employed by another company, they will not have a active CV, which means if you're trying to find the best of the best candidates, asking them for the CV might be a, too big of a hurdle, which means they will not apply for the company and they will probably uh, go somewhere else and you'll lose out on that candidate. So what you need to do here is you need to understand what's important to you, understand how you can make the application process and the candidate journey from them finding you to them applying to your company as easy as possible. And probably one of the biggest things that people overlook right there is the mobile. Right now, I think the latest statistics in Europe are that 60% or 70% of people start browsing for jobs on their mobile phone, which isn't surprising considering the time people look for jobs or the time they have spare time to review something else is on the commute uh, home from work. It's on the job during lunch. It's when they're on the bathroom or at home in the couch. That's when they have time to scroll social media, Facebook, they get advertising somewhere out where, and that's where you have the opportunity to reach them. So if you make it impossible for them to apply from your phone, get information on the phone, and really be personal on the phone, you will lose out on a lot of candidates, which will impact your candidate experience as well, to really make sure you're able to measure that as well. The interview or the everything else, everything else I've talked to prior to this has been more about what you can do more of a software and the candidate journey for specific, not more individual as a person. But the interview is probably one of the more most like crucial parts of a candidate's journey. Most of that prior to that usually goes in an instance. It's usually done more of a, on an autopilot. But once they're entering the interview, they have nerves. They're really nervous, haven't prepared. And they're sitting in your lobby waiting, or now, nowadays they're waiting at home for the link to the video meeting that you're supposed to have with them. So really make sure that you can like, help them with their nerves, making sure that you give them opportunities to test everything, to talk to your team, get comfortable, but also making sure that the team and the people who are interviewing know how to do it correctly. Based on my own experience, one of the worst things you can do is have a really untrained person interviewing you for the job, asking really like irrelevant questions, asking you know, stupid stuff or stuff they could already have known if they actually, put, for example, read my CV. Uh, so really make sure that the most important part of the candidate experience is definitely the feedback and the interview. Making sure that the interview, when they're actually talking to a real person, they're, they're asked the right questions and they're treated like a real human being and they're actually uh, understood and this is the best way to do is put yourself in their shoes and understand what, what what would be like what would be my turning point what I would be like no this doesn't work for my own personal sake it's probably the interview that has the absolute worst impact for me on my own candidate experience like being in an in a inter interview scenario where the candidate is treated bad and the recruiter is 
inappropriate or isn't isn't an educator asking their inappropriate like bad questions that will just ruin a company for me and probably will make me not apply and probably not care anything else about that company but there's everything here comes together and really really important so one of the first things i told you in the beginning is try to get someone else to apply for the job at your company and try to make sure that you get feedback from them but also try to do it yourself so going back to the really beginning and understanding well what's the journey like what can i expect you need to put yourself in their shoes to understand what can we improve upon because once you understand where, who your candidate is, what they're looking for, how you reach them, and which parts of the process you interact with them, you then also have the opportunity to really put yourself in their perspective. See, how would I want to be treated in this scenario? And this is something you can do in a lot of different, uh, uh, in the different parts of the recruiting process, but the recruiting process and the candidate journey and the candidate experience isn't just something you fix by improving your interviews, improving your communication, improving your brand. It's something you have to constantly work on, something you have to constantly adapt, and something you need to constantly work with and gather feedback. Some of the things are more important, like others, understanding that you need to communicate, you need to give them feedback, you need really, really need to make sure that they're that they're communicated to and they, they get updates when something is important. You need to make sure that you have a tempo and a momentum in the recruiting process because the best people will not be out there for long. And if they have to wait for too long, they will probably leave somewhere else and they will probably talk bad. And really make sure that you have your own personal touch and that you understand the importance of doing the interviews correctly and properly. This is such an important thing that you really need to make sure that at least touch on everything. This isn't something you can do in a week, this isn't something you probably will do in a week, but first you need to understand where you're at, what you can do in order to understand your current processes and try to get as much feedback. There are great softwares out there that really allow you to measure candidate experience of interviews, of applications, of the uh, everything, of everything a part of the, the recruiting process. Are there any questions or anything you would like me to go through? Hi Frederick, thanks for that. Um, so there's a sort of a few questions that come through, but first of all, I just kind of wanted to kind of recap on some of the things you said there. So well, at the very beginning, I think you, you kind of pointed out that people need to understand their own recruitment process as it is now. Um, yes. I think I think that's quite important because I think quite often we always do what we've always done, and then you're always going to get the same uh, outcome, aren't you? And you know, understanding the time frame and the steps that you go through at each process will help you improve each of those steps rather than just treating it as one step in terms of the recruitment. So it's really good takeaway for me, I thought. Um, the other thing you mentioned about interview training, I think it's, it's really important to make sure you've got trained interviewers to make sure that you're getting the best out of the candidate uh, as well. Um, I think quite often people potentially might have walked into that interview and not actually had a deep dive of that candidate's CV or, or um, the information they've put forward and they're almost trying to learn the candidate in that interview room rather than going in trying to get as much out of that candidate that they you know using that time wisely basically and, and that'll make it more personal for the the candidate I mean they, they, to get to the interview stage these are these are candidates that you're likely to hire so you really want to make sure that they uh want to work for you as well and doing that is is adding that personalization into that and making sure you've taken the time to understand them before they walk in there i think it's really um really important mm -hmm. i think the time scale thing was is quite uh, poignant as well um because i know i know because we use team taylor ourselves and you you can put uh on on your application page when people apply uh how long they can expect to wait before you respond to them i think that's clear setting out your expectations for them at the beginning so that um you know if you say you're going to respond within 24 hours and you know 12 hours in they're waiting for the reply they they know that you you you're kind of not on onto their process yet um and and some of the things that we've used with Team Taylor is is trying to make it a bit more personal in terms of our um, our jobs page. You know, obviously we have all the information about the jobs on there, but we have got a lot, a lot of information about the team as well, so they can get to know the team before they apply. 
the th types of things we get up to, you know, the social activities, the charitable events and stuff that we do as well, which I think is actually quite a lot of candidates will be looking for now in terms of, you know, it's not necessarily just a job. I mean, you spend most of your working life uh, at work. I know it sounds sad, but you obviously want to make sure that that um, is a role that you really want to 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 be to be in for a long long time. Um, so so thank you for that. Um, one of the other things that I thought was quite interesting, I know you, you didn't mention it here, but I was reading on the Team Taylor blog that you've now got video in Team Taylor, which I think is really important now in this environment because you know, face to face interviews are going to be hard. Um, so I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about that in terms of how, how that works. Actually, like we, we launched video interviews integrated to your team until a couple of weeks ago. And uh, we wanted to push that forward, of course, due to the ongoing corona situation where people really can't recruit physically or face to face the way they could have in the, in the past. But one of the other things that we, we noticed is based off like research and other people and other partners we've had, candidate experience usually is better on video because it's less like. I don't know how to phrase it, less bullshit on the candidates. Like when you're actually doing an interview like this, it's more formal. You actually have the right proper questions. You're often more prepared because you realize you need to like get their focus in a different way because it's harder to focus on a like video call than it is face to face, and you can't really measure like social cues, how they how they look and their body language the same way. Which means you usually interview them more properly. You usually become more prepared, and you usually make sure that you like. Did you get that question correctly? Did you understand that? And can you update so we understood you correctly? So you ask them more for feedback during the recruiting process. So a lot of the things that people are pretty bad at in their face-to-face -face interviews, they, they're forced themselves to do during a video interview, uh, which mm -hmm. actually emphasizes and improves the interview and the candidate experience uh, quite a lot, which is really exciting. No, no, I think uh, we're looking forward to trying it out ourselves. Um, so a couple of um, questions that have come in. So obviously um, in, in the UK, we're in lockdown. You're, you're not in lockdown. You're uh, uh, encouraged to, to uh, not be out and about. Um, so, but it relates to um, how can we make a recruitment process uh, work during um, essentially a lockdown process? and. Um, do you have any thought, thoughts on that, basically, how, how we can make, make it work better um, for everybody? I, th I think a lot of the, the things are pretty similar, uh, that you don't have to change that much. Of course, what you have to change is some of the benefits that you have current, that you had currently, maybe you don't have anymore. Maybe you don't have the after work Fridays anymore, so you have to be transparent that you won't have that. Of course, candidates still will understand that you probably won't have after work Fridays on during COVID. But the the way people or candidates look for information, how they research, what they do, I think they probably do that even more right now. And people will probably apply for more jobs right now. So um, I think the way candidates interact is pretty similar now due to lockdown, prior to lockdown, especially the ones who are actively applying for jobs. I think most people who have been furloughed, who have been let go, they will probably try to apply for as many jobs as possible, which means you just need to make sure that you have a decent way for you to really streamline your process to make sure that you can give everyone feedback once they've applied, make sure you can schedule the interviews and book interviews and perform the interviews. Uh, so having the right tools to really speed up that process, because you will probably get more applicants if you publish jobs right now. But and also just understand that your candidates are probably online looking at your company, reviewing your company. So now's probably a perfect time to try to update how you work with branding, how you communicate and understand your, your process quite a lot. Because in general, it doesn't really change that much for candidates. They're probably sitting at home like they probably would have before, but, or they probably would have been on, on the train or the bus. Uh, so the way they look for information, the way they apply, the way they, the only thing that's happened changed is their current situation and probably their work situation. They're probably still uh, reviewing your company, applying for your company and everything the same way as, as before. Uh, so that just makes it as important or they're probably doing that more, um, more in detail and more in depth uh, or just, or less in depth because they're applying for more, com for more, for more, um, companies which means you just have to emphasize the branding and the communication a lot more right now yeah I think I think that's right I mean I, 
I mean, com companies might not um, sort of promote what they did uh, or how I'd continue to do throughout lockdown on COVID uh, on their company page, but they certainly would have done it socially, or, you know, on Twitter or LinkedIn and whatnot. And I think I, I read somewhere the other day that you know that's probably going to be one of the most uh, asked questions when people start going to interviews is, so how did you treat your staff during COVID? Because it kind of sets the scene in terms of how 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 the company does look after its employees. Um, so definitely be prepared for that question um, when you get round to interviews. I think um, there's a pretty clear relation to how people, how companies treat their candidate in the recruiting process, to how companies treat their 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 staff and their employees. So candidates will probably try to understand, and especially now in COVID, how you treat your staff and versus how you treat your candidates. Because if you treat your candidates like like really bad currently. You probably treat your employees pretty bad as well. There's not, of course, a direct correlation, but there's often similarities on how you treat your employees versus how you treat your candidates. No, no, definitely. Yeah. Um, what one question might be a bit of a curveball is: Do you have any particular recommendations on how to assure a good candidate experience when a company is using AI in the recruitment and selection process? Repeat the question one more time, just so I can think think while you're re repeating it again. So it's basically how can um, a, com a company get a good candidate experience when they're using AI in the recruitment and selection process? I think I think the the benefit of AI is usually to help you either um, answer the most frequently asked questions, where everybody gets the same opportunity, and you can usually automate a lot of the things that usually you don't have time to. So I think AI and certain things like chatbots and stuff like that could be really really good in terms of, well, helping you make sure that everybody has all the info they need, everybody gets the same experience, like experience no matter if they apply from a mobile phone on the desktop at night in the morning, which is really good to make sure you can make sure that. When it comes to matching and screening during the process, I think it's there's different options with AI, but I think it will help you unbias a bit more and it will help you match better. So I think AI will usually help, but I think matching AI, but it's also, it's never going to be just AI. You always have to have the personal touch because candidate experience, people don't like to be discarded just because of AI. People don't want like to be approved just because of AI either. People want to have the personal touch. Why, why people and recruiters are probably going to be pretty crucial in recruiting in the future as well because people like people. Like within sales, people buy from other people and people they like, even if someone has yeah. better software, they will not buy from someone they absolutely hate. And the same thing goes for recruiting. They will not apply for a company where they work for a company that they absolutely hate the recruiter or the people working for it. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then another question was about uh, probably towards the end of the candidate experience, and you, you referenced um, sort of the leg, Lego as the example. Obviously, with COVID nineteen, um, how how can a company sort of give perks to those candidates when they're trying to onboard them or get to you know get to the final stages of the the recruitment process I, I think this is probably the one of the the hardest things because it has to be very personal to your, to your company I read a blog from a competitor of ours actually who ranked like 10 of their clients who do something really really amazing and they have different aspects but like we just small things like sending them a t-shirt or making sure that they like one of the things is talk to them on the phone like that's probably the simplest thing you can do to make sure they feel more special and more like personally treated because an email could be automatically sent out but a personal phone call will help out a lot even if it's a rejection or a talk to them try to call them as much as possible that's probably the simplest thing you can do to really boost um, personalization call them instead of emailing them or texting them yeah, that's the simplest thing you can do to really just boost to some extent. Yeah, and I think that's right. And I think some some of the things about that really is about, you know, there are, there will be the the question about well, when do I start? Well, you need to be clear and honest with the candidates so that you know you you might say, well, we want to make you an offer, but we want COVID nineteen to end and the lockdown to end. You know, where if you're recruiting now, you need to be clear and, and maybe either delay that recruitment process to when you are ready to take someone rather than have them hanging around. But, you know, if if you are going to recruit during a lockdown period, I think the, the employer definitely needs to be clear to the candidate. How will that be managed? Because, you know, inducting um, a candidate remotely is, is not as easy as when you're sitting next to somebody but as long as you can demonstrate that you've thought that through you've got good processes in place that would definitely help help that 
candidate make that choice that you are the right person for them? That comes down to, to it again, transparency and expectations. If you try to like paint the pig, I don't know if that's something you say in, in English, but really try to make something look better than it actually is, or try to avoid certain saying certain things, that will just hurt you in the, in the end, right? If you say you can't hire you right now, we want to hire you right now, or want to hire you right now, but you probably will be harder than it usually is, and really make sure that you are transparent and you set the right expectations, that will help a lot. It's 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 probably the worst thing to be afraid and try to avoid saying certain things just because it might seem bad, because that will come by and bite you in the ass, uh, probably. Um, I think that's probably uh, all the questions we've got uh, time for today. So there are a couple of others that have come through, but we'll come back to those kind of, those um, uh, delegates uh, after the webinar uh, and send them separate emails. Um, but if you have any questions for uh, Frederick, then let us know and we can forward those on to him as well. Um, but thank you, Frederick. I thought it was really useful and I think everyone's taken away a lot of interesting points. I'm just going to take control. Okay, I'm on the right page. Um, so thank you, Frederick. Uh, just to kind of recap then, so if you have any questions, um, you can email us at inquiries at hrsolutions-uk.com and we will come back to you on that. Um, you will get a follow-up email from this uh, webinar as well, which have further details as how to contact us. You'll also get uh, a short feedback survey for you to give us some feedback about how we can make uh, these webinars even more engaging and interactive with you as well as topics that you might be interested in for the future so if you could take time to respond to that that'd be much appreciated and as mentioned at the beginning of the webinar we have been doing a lot of webinars throughout uh, the lockdown period partly because there's a lot of people um, at home maybe can can that they have less distractions so can attend these webinars but also to try and provide uh, a bit more insight into everybody whilst they're working at home so um we've obviously done quite a few you can see there's kind of two a week for the next couple of weeks um on the screen so if you are interested in joining any of those webinars there will be a link on the follow-up email that comes out after this webinar but the link is on the website as well on sorry on the slides in front of you so www.hrsolutions-uk.com forward slash upcoming hyphen webinars and you'll see all our latest webinars on there that you can sign up to obviously the topics we discussed today will be ongoing topics that we'll talk about throughout the year and throughout the lockdown period if you want to stay in the loop then please make sure you've signed up to our newsletter the link is on the screen but it'll also be in the follow-up uh, email you get from us as well uh, like this webinar all our webinars are recorded so we do put them on our webinar archive page and you'll be able to get a link to that from our email that we follow up with you as well so that was um, the end of the webinar so if you have any questions then please do not hesitate to reach out to us and we will um, come back to you with, your, with the answer to your questions. But in the meantime, just one last thank to Frederick for a very engaging webinar on uh, engaging the candidate throughout their recruitment experience. Um, and thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thanks so much for listening in. No problem.